All right. So, <sighs> what am I going to do now? Um, That's too much. Um, let's start trying to generate uh, benchmark. Let's try to generate the number of legal positions based on the initial position. That's what I was curious about. Where is the divergence, if any? Wow. That's one hell of a divergence. Okay. Okay, so we can agree that from each initial position, there's only um, 20 responses from the opponent. Okay. After D2, D3, 459 versus 539. That makes no sense at all. Um, mm -hmm. 520 versus 600. I'm missing something. I've overlooked something critical here. Yeah, so... Regrettably, I cannot... Well, I could specify the depth in the test file, couldn't I? Okay, after a7, a6, there's 26 versus 30. That doesn't make sense. Um, G1, E2. Somehow my patch lost this move. Interesting. Okay, what have I changed? Oh. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, that would do it. Silly, silly me. Um, yeah, I was trying to optimize this. And, um, my math was wrong. Uh, so, 
Is there any way I could make this less complicated? Target bitwise or uh, really, yeah, that's it's not going to get less complicated. Been through here before. So now we should be at parity with where we started. Right, that's better. Um, theory that should in turn mean that I should be able to pass this test. Yeah, so bishop takes rook is the only move here. All right, status. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that did pass the test right. Yeah, perf testing, okay. Nice. Um... So this is my code patch, and I'm debating now, can I simplify this expression? Or do I just want to leave it? Probably just want to leave it. Since double checks are so rare anyway. Um... Oh, so I need to verify that I've fixed the initial issue with my latest patch. Uh, um, so I need my original test position back, which would be this one with black to move. And what we're trying to test is at a depth of one, can we find a legal move? Okay, we don't need that perf test to run every time, now that we know it works. Um, yeah, so c5, e7, uh, which is bishop takes rook. That's a legal move now. Um... So, <laughs> oh, yes, this is the block I introduced, saying if there's more than one checking piece, uh, we need to go find some captures. Um, Now maybe I want to change this uh, generate all routine uh, right now. What does it do? Yes, I can't change the evasions routine like I tried to do earlier. Um. Oh, here's an interesting. No. Okay, so if types of Asians do this stuff, um, Uh, 
How do we... Oh, here's how we see if there are checkers or not. Um... Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, no, it already does. It uses it. So it's possible to do that. Been implementing that for the last couple months. Um, can the in browser version do that? No, because the browser doesn't support the vectorized instructions necessary for that. So, um, yeah, without the browser supporting the instructions that allow you to do tons of operations at once, um, there's not really any performance gain doing it. And you have to download all the weights anyway, so it's not going to work in a browser, but yeah, no, it's implemented. I've had that for a while now. And it expanded it out to all the variants. I haven't tested it, but it's usable. Uh, yeah. yeah, I use the same eval on all variants. If anybody really cares, they can tune it fairly easily. I don't think anyone cares. Um, other than the fact of, is it possible or not? Well, now we know it's possible. If anybody cared, they could produce their own weights. I don't have the hardware to do it. Um, If I'm going to use a switch, then I need a default case. So let's just do it this way instead. Hmm. This is so not worth adding, though. For this rare, rare situation, it's okay to go through all these extra gyrations of looking for all captures, isn't it? Um, hmm. Yes, added code is not worth it. All right, but over here, So here I've got this opposing pieces. There's a valid set of targets. Um. Oh wait, if we're doing evasions already, yeah, then the square of the checking piece is already in this list. So there's no need to summon it again. There we go.
There we go, it even fits in 80 columns. All right, so. And then down here, it says we cannot capture opposing pieces, which are next to our own king, which still holds true. Okay, is this valid for the test position? It should be. Yeah, we still get our one move here. Um, if I'm going to check that the entire move generator is still valid, let's do that. Perfed test started. Perfed is a technique where you give it a position, and measure the performance of the move generator, but also measure the accuracy of it. Perf testing, okay. Nice. Um... All right, well, I thought this would be far more painful than it ended up being. Um, but we can see if I compile the engine with this patch and then see, can it generate the number of legal moves that it's supposed to? Um, it'll say okay at the end indicating that from the start position it tried generating uh, the first five moves three by white two by black and it, for atomic chess the magic number it came up with was this here number four eight six four nine seven nine it's the number of uh possible games of atomic that are exactly five moves. Um, so it's good that works. Um, I think that's uh, dip head minus one. All right. Do that. Check out this branch. Get rebase, no neural network. What? Uh, how? Something's not in sync. All right. Without neural network. Okay, nice. Hang on. Uh, so we got an updated version of this. And then we've got um, the version of the engine that doesn't use the neural network at all. Oh, right. Um, actually, uh, I 
I should test this. Um, so let's see if we're not using a neural network. If we disabled all the neural networking code, which one of these branches does do, um, that ends up with a different number of nodes searched from the start position. Right. What? Oh. Let's try that again. After this is all done. And I'll be submitting a test over. I can't spell. Yeah, that's what I meant. I'll be submitting a new test. Um, it's going to be atomic. I'm going to need the numbers we need to specify. Okay, this is good. My base branch that I'm comparing to is the code without the neural network because I don't know if this fish test cluster can support neural networks or not. Um, Again. Oops. Oh yeah, no, that was right. I don't have to edit any files. So we're going to see from the start position, can I get this same number that I just put into the commit message? Uh, we expected this number. In, oh, I'm sorry, in, we expected some other number last time. We expected this last time we got... Okay, now we got this number which is reproducible. Um, so we'll start that compilation up in the cloud. Um, Can I cherry pick just on a branch name? No. Hmm. Strange. What is this? See whatever is the yeah this C B four C C etc. That's weird. I tried to cherry pick it. No such luck. Uh oh. Oh, hang on. I know what I messed up. Um, canceling the cherry picking in process. It's good. Yeah, I didn't mean to continue cherry picking at that point. So I said check out, right? I meant check out new branch with that name. Now check out the one from the remote repository. And now, okay, we can check, we can cherry pick the head of another branch. That's really cool. Um, 
so. And we can push this up to the cloud as well. And let's just get back in our master branch before I mess something up. Um, so here's our local base branch. Here's the other branch that we're going to use for the test. And let's see, you get six branches, no neural network, compile without support of the neural network. Here's the number of nodes from the start position and a typical search. So that's kind of like our signature. Um, to make sure that we're deploying code that matches the branch. Uh, sequential progressive ratio test. If that's good. Um, my commit message. What is my commit message this time? Generate. Yeah, this atomic check capture evasion. That's a terrible commit message. All right, and then we should see my test pending here. And I forgot to set its priority to one. There we go. Yeah, I'm setting it to a higher priority because I messed up and I need this fixed. Um, so to be able to fix Stockfish. Here's the fix in two parts. One part is this um, thing that measures the number or measures the performance of the legal move generator. Doesn't need this neural network parameter in here anymore um, because all the variants now at least run with that. Um, but also this never should have been necessary in the first place because this is just testing the performance of the move generator. So I was stupid to add this, uh, this um, what do you call it, parameter, I guess, argument, something. I never needed to add this um, to any of these tests, and it makes sense to remove it at this point. Because all we're trying to test um, is one command here, which is perfed, which just tests the move generator. It doesn't use the evaluation function at all. Um, so this is code I never needed to write, and I can strip out at this point. Um, here's some more code I never needed to write. That, like, if we're evading check, well, it turns out that Stockfish already adds onto the legal move destinations, the checking piece. You don't need to add that yourself. So it was redundant for me to add that again. Um, so yeah, um, captures that are adjacent to the checking piece or adjacent to the opposing king are legal so long as they don't um, capture right next to our king. Capturing next to your own king is always illegal in Atomic. Um, So this is one bug that was reported. Once we have legal moves being generated again, then we can go back and look at all these other bugs that people are complaining about. Um, so I, um, uh, before I go to my reaction to other people's reports, uh, let's go back and look at the initial report. So, the initial report was saying that in this here, no, not this position, in this chapter three of the study, if you're looking over here, um, somewhere, yeah, here it is, after night E8. Um, so there are comments that 
there's a bug. And I saw the word cloud here. I'm thinking, well, hell, how am I going to duplicate an evaluation bug? When, like, this should never hit depth 88 anyway. Are we completely certain that this is something that is reproducible in Stockfish, not just reproducible in the cloud? And then I argued with the person who reported the issue, who told me, well, I can't duplicate this in my machine. I'm like, bullshit. Anybody can download this engine. You can compile it from source. But furthermore, um, another possibility, just for people unfamiliar, is that you can go over to our continuous integration pipeline, where we've got AppVayer, and you can download the binary here, either 32-bit or 64-bit, either the debug version or the release version. And this supports all the variants, and I put a lot of effort into getting this running, so, like, I can't build stuff on Windows, so I'm having AppVayer do that for me. And you go over here and you download, here's the latest stockfish. It expires in six months, so as long as you download in six months, following whenever I do a commit, it's going to be there. And you can go in here and just run the engine the same way I'm running it from a command line. You run it however you're going to run the engine, and you'll see interact with it through a terminal, or you download any um, user interface like Winboard. Um, so, like, this used to be quite popular for interfacing with the free internet chess server, but you can still run it locally. It supports tons of variants. It supports stuff that my ver uh, engine doesn't. And Fabian goes on and does so much more interesting things than I do at this point, but um, he's got an engine that is a derivative of Stockfish that does other stuff like Shogi. And, um... I never got into that coding wise, at least not with Stockfish code, because I'm not interested in supporting a trillion different variants. I'm already supporting things like grid chess that nobody cares about, but um, wasn't too hard to get supported. It's just every time I do a build, it's that much slower now. Um, but anyway, so the original issue was reported that with this word cloud up here, and I don't know if, like, I have a usability problem with this, that I can't get my local, like, so once you toggle on the engine, if you're not satisfied with this, you can hit the plus icon and just start a search in your local browser. And it'll just spin and never tell you what the search depth of the local engine is. So I have no way of knowing if I'm going to hit 88, if that takes like a minute or 10 hours or 10 days or 10 weeks. I have no idea if I hit this plus icon, what's it going to take for me to get past depth 88, which is the cloud-based evaluation. And that's not just a atomic thing, that's just in general. So... I mean, I appreciate everything that I have here. I just, if I hit the plus icon, this is spinning forever. I'd like to have some idea if, if it's I'm ever going to pass this. So if I can ever see what my local evaluation is, is, I guess, my real concern. I mean, yes, the cloud evaluation is more accurate than whatever I have locally 99% of the time. But possibly somebody's got a crummy browser and Stockfish did something weird once, or I don't know. Maybe just didn't upload the evaluation correctly, but... So I saw the word cloud here, and I was thinking, well, I have no idea if I can replicate that in my local terminal. And I didn't want to spend all day trying, especially because, like, legal move generation, as far as I knew... Nobody had reported a bug, and so um, evaluation functions are kind of a touchy subject at the moment. <laughs> um, it's something I can look into, but it's not easy. But yeah, seeing uh, this report that even in this position, Stockfish can't find a legal move at all had me pretty concerned.
So this was easy to replicate. Just set up this position um, and see whether Stockfish finds any moves or not. That's what the whole move generator perfed thing was used for that we just used a half hour ago. So with that, with us generating legal moves again, um, I'm going back to the original issue. So they reported like the evaluation was wrong, that this is 98 does not lose. How did, I mean, what's the evaluation even supposed to be? Knight d3 does not mate because knight takes g7 wins on the spot. Um, so maybe the evaluation is supposed to be 0.2 or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe knight, or maybe c3 is forced here. Um, but yeah, what's been reported now... Well, so we got another something like uh, discover double check seems to cause whatever issue they're talking about. I think it's more a discover check than a double check thing, because like if you're in double check, um, I don't know if the double check aspect matters or not. It's just those are the powerful moves that players care about. Um, but yeah, if this knight had gone even to like to a6, I mean, we could test this in the browser, right? Um, but yeah, they're saying only knight and queen. This, this is the only one he tested, but... Apparently, he thinks this is also problematic or something. But yeah, queen, bishop, and rook are all of our ranged pieces. But probably this would still be reproducible with the queen on some other square in this check. So, um, yeah, and then IJH, so among atomic players, these bugs have been known for a while. I don't disagree that like atomic has some regressions of performance and like we have lost some elo and i fought super hard and i just can't get it back without potentially making the code a total mess if there's a reason um so yeah and then he goes on and elaborates, there have been issues with promotion as well. So, like, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> like, if you have specific examples of issues, those are helpful. Things like, hey, we've lost ELO. Like, what can I do about that? But... If you have an example of an issue, that's useful because, like, it's hard for me to test every example of every possibility. So, if you have specific things and can point them out, that's that's good. But if those are known issues, like, I get that, like, people put into my issue tracker, "Hey, I found a position where." I don't like the evaluation that Stockfish came up with, and my response to that is tough. Like, unless you can make a compelling argument that your evaluation that you want is better than the one that it generates, that's something. But um, if you have some example where clearly something's not operating correctly, um... And again, I'm not sure like what he means by this. But if he's saying there's a bug and can like make a compelling case for that actually being a bug, then that's useful. But usually people just come to my issue tracker and say, I don't like this evaluation, go fix it. And I go off for like a day or a week coming up with random code changes and see if any of them work and none of them work. And I'm like, Okay, I tried everything you suggested. What do you suggest now? That's 
different than like here. We may have a compelling case where like we have a double check and black has a legal capture and Stockfish just doesn't find it at all. It's not that we have the wrong evaluation, it's just that like Stockfish can't even find the move. Um, anyway, I've got a patch to fix that now that somebody showed me that. Um, so it's that'll be useful. And then um, I experienced this double check, but I saw a different bug. The primary, see, this is the sort of thing, like, is this a bug? What's the difference between three and one? I mean, it's two, right? Um, uh, his concern here is if you keep playing the best move, you will get a repetition. Okay. So that I would not expect a repetition to generate a positive evaluation. That sounds like an issue. Uh, so we can take a look at this. But um, So he says just keep take Well, my problem here now is I don't know with this web interface whether that affects the evaluation or not. But what he's saying to do to repeat this Primary choice is plus three and secondary is plus one, but black can force the position to a draw. Back to how it is before white plays his best move. I have no idea what any of this means, but we have this position, and I think he's just saying hit the space bar and just keep hitting the space bar and like you can force a draw. And I have no idea. So I can't reproduce whatever that is. I'm not even going to pursue that right now, although I am curious, but I'm not pursuing it because like my time is limited. Um, so I politely say thanks for spotting the bug. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> um, and then, oh yeah, the other thing that tilted me. So... Or was it? It was seven here, right? No. Where did they mention a revert? Yeah. ES. I mean, this is good if they're not pursuing this, but uh, we found that reverting a patch gained quite a bit of ELO, and he uses the word fixed, and I'm not sure what the bug is that's being fixed there like but here this was heavily tested um, across a variety of different machines this particular patch gained elo at the time it was made and they're saying now like a year and a half or something later it actually um, removing this is a good thing for stockfish and i'd like to understand why instead of just doing it um, and maybe that's my fault, my failing as a human for wanting to understand things. Uh, there's too much code to understand it all, but, um, yeah, actually this, uh, whatever, nobody's going to read that anyway. So I'll get rid of my comment because it le it's basically a dead link now. Um, so yeah, I'd also ask them, like, by the way, we did test my patch and the test results can be found, or my test results can be found here and I couldn't find your test result here. So how can it be an ELO gain? How is this tested? Well. Uh, it's just one person did a local change and it ran some chain uh, tests on their machine. It seemed to work better. Um, when I found the exe in these bugged positions, still give the wrong eval. Okay, so they're saying even with the revert, that's like a separate thing. 
and it seems to gain ELO, but it has no effect on the issue that's being reported right now. Um, yeah, people come up with theories, but unless you're actually willing to do the science, the hard work of performing a test, and another test, and another test, and another test, and just testing everything. If you're not willing to do the hard work, coming up with the theories, 99% um, of the time will not be useful. Either because the theory, the hypothesis you come up with is incorrect, or because um, even if you are correct, there's no way to establish a corrective action, a code change to fix whatever you're talking about without breaking a ton of other stuff. It's so like being right is not enough. You have to like, yeah, it's hard to come up with the correct theory all the time. Oh, wait, hang on. Do I have a parenthesis and the unary expression? Yeah, I have an unnecessary parenthesis there. I can fix that. To do atomic double check. It really has nothing to do with double check at all. This is a stupid branch name, but anyway. Yeah, it's down here. Yeah, we have a single expression in parentheses. There we go. That's better. It's readable. So, there's no functional change, just a slight code cleanup. script is back to the way it used to be. Um, hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, here's the initial checkout command. I was wondering where that went. All right, um, let's build leeches. Okay, there have been local changes to leeches, so let's push those. Oh, sorry, there have been changes to the leeches code since my last update. So I'm going to update my work of Leela. So it's now in sync with whatever the most recent commit is. Better logging. That's nice. Uh, improved tournament creation rate limiting. Huh. Okay. Uh, what's this improvement refer to? Oh. Okay, there's a limit of 5 now instead of 10. But yeah, I'm guessing like whatever this is. Um, oh, I see. So there's now a rate limit creation with a rate limited parameter. So you don't accidentally trigger that multiple times or something. Nice. Um, more, more options in Swiss creation. So yeah, now, um, oh, right. So he mentioned he was going to allow a minimum number of game and uh, maximum number of games um, as possible options. 
So when you or next to deploy, you'll be able to specify how many games um, a player needs in order to be able to join instead of making that a fixed five. So yeah, Swiss tournaments, you'll be able to say, I'm only going to all accept players that have already played some rated games. Fix tests. What's this? Analyzer. Oh. Okay, that's cool. Uh, are there other things in the feedback forum that I have to respond to? Not right now. Um, download my filtered games. Huh. Yeah, using the API probably makes sense. Uh, the shield. Oh, whoever owns a shield, you could... Yeah, I don't know. I like features. But I also sympathize a little bit. Not very much. But a little bit with the uh, Lee Chess devs. Not wanting to maintain every feature forever. So that you have to be very selective about new features. Um... Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, not really sure how to file an issue for the mobile experience, and whether that's the app or whether... Well, they said it was the browser on the phone, didn't they? New board. Boards are outdated and boring. I mean, um, people have ideas, but, and I have ideas too, but ideas don't go very far, unfortunately. It takes an extraordinarily good idea for things to just, for an idea to kick off a lot of work. <laughs> Wait, what? Titles for every variant and time control. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Seems like a lot of work to maintain. Um... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, it's resolved. Good enough for me. All right, so let me check. I've got how many branches? Wait, that's not my... That's leeches. That's not stockfish. I was going to check for all these branches I'm maintaining now. Can I see that? Yeah, I can see it at a glance here. Build status for all of these. Um, somebody wanted to try to update and templatize uh, move generation. For all variants and so I've maintained this branch but it's not passing tests at the moment hmm. oh okay so locally I was able to compile leech us nice um,
Yeah, is there anything more for me to code with respect to this discover check fix thing? Well, I mean, this really only affects double checks anyway. Um, yeah, so actually it is a decent branch name. I just, my commit message still sucks, but yeah, so we no longer need that extra term, but really the functional change is right here. Oh, right, I was thinking, and I looked over at several times already. Is there any way that I could generate just the capturing moves that take particular pieces? Um, it's not going to be that easy. So these double checks in Atomic... Well, I give this a lot of thought offline, actually. So let's say we've got atomic. Do, do, do. I mean, that doesn't really change the board editor, does it? Um, but like, say I've got a king. OK, that little icon here slightly confused me. That's OK. So say we got this kind of position. Uh, actually, let's put this king over here. And then let's add, like, I don't know, a bishop over here, a rook over there, a pawn over here, this stuff, you know? Um, make this black to play. So... Um, so we have this position here. We have a double check. No kind of capture can ever like possibly take out all the checking pieces. So like while there are, so the condition that I'm responding to here is, is there more than one checking piece? And if there is, there's lots of ways that there could be more than one checking piece. Um, I mean, regardless, if we're looking for moves other than an evasion, and we've already looked for moves where the king runs away, that's done somewhere up here. Here we generate, here's all the squares next to the king. Go find the ones that are either adjacent, oh, I'm sorry, this fine, here's the opponent's king, and the legal squares for our king are those next to our king which are unoccupied, and um, hmm. well, what's this last part? Look for squares that are unoccupied that are not attacked by what? Maybe this is wrong, too. Slider attacks and not king ring. <sighs> do, do, do. So ordinarily for finding an evasion move, you look for squares adjacent to the king that are not occupied by one of our own pieces that are not attacked by an opposing piece. Here, we're looking for uh, squares that are not occupied by pieces of either color because the king cannot capture because that would cause an explosion, which would remove the king. Um, so the king cannot capture, and let's see. We're looking for squares that are not attacked by a bishop or rook or queen. That is outside. Oh, okay. See, so yeah, it's okay to uh, approach a square as long as the opposing king is uh, attacking that square.
Um, but if the opposing king is not attacking a square, then we have to make sure we're not uh, stepping into check. That's what this all means. Um, I'm confused why they call this slider attacks, though. Like, why are why is that more important than pawns and knights? Is there already some handling of pawn checks and knight checks somewhere? Um, so... Oh, I'm sorry. The reason we don't have to think more about pawn attacks and knight attacks is because if we're in check by a knight, or in check by a pawn, and we're moving, and we're not in check twice, and the twice or a check condition is already handled elsewhere. So if we're in check by just a pawn or a knight and we move the king, it's very difficult. Like only it is still possible if you're in check by a knight to put yourself in check so if i clear the board again if we got something really simple there's a knight check um white to play it's like yeah here we're in check so like the knight controls both squares uh, so why does this code for standard chess ignore attacks by other pieces? What am I missing? Uh, so if we're in check multiple times, normally Stockfish just says, you know, you got to move the king. And up here we've generated, no, up here we've generated all the legal king moves. Uh, oh, we've generated a list of king evasions which later are validated. That's the deal. So these moves may or may not be legal, but we're adding them to the move list anyway. I see. Forgot about that. Welcome. So much salt. <laughs> Yeah, so we're making headway on, I don't know, not sure why I volunteered for all this coding effort, just maintaining this Stockfish for Chess variance. It seemed fun at the time that I started doing it, and over time, like, the bug reports have just gotten stranger and stranger. It's impossible to like support every way that this could be used. It's still a useful thinking exercise to try to support it, but um, but yeah, some people are just unhappy with the numbers this engine ret returns. Other people can point out here's a specific position and a very specific reason why Stockfish's output is wrong. So in this case, in atomic chess, this bishop takes rook move here is legal, and Stockfish is not finding it. But in other positions, like here, um, I mean here there's a mate threat, and like this discover check is taking priority somehow and it shouldn't and my code fix should handle this too that's right i wanted to test that that's why i keep going circling back here so i'm gonna test this position here's the fen
Wait, is that the same position I already tested? No. Um, What's the evaluation of this position? I mean, in this position, somehow Stockfish is coming up correctly with pawn c3. That, like, you can't just ignore this. No, I'm sorry. Pawn c3 is wrong. Knight e8 should win. Or at least should be enough of a threat to force black to respond by, like, having to move their king away or having to push this. I think pushing this pawn is actually the move in this position. Um, but um, somehow the engine is suggesting this and ignoring this response. And I think my code uh, patch will now prioritize Knight takes pawn accordingly. Um, so, no such option. Use N and U. Nice. Forgot about that. Um, so, what now? Oh. Well, that's not a good build, then. Um, but instead of... Instead of doing this at a depth of one ply, let's do a proper search at six and a half posts deep. It's going to take forever again. But I'm just curious, can I get Stockfish to recommend a move like c3 here? No, like knight e8 here. Oh, I forget which position I just told it to evaluate. Scroll up, maybe I can see it. Pawn c3 is the recommendation. I'm not sure that pawn c3 is best. Like, knight e8 looks interesting. Pawn c3 looks interesting. Um, I mean, here white's losing a queen. Um, in this position, can stockfish? No. Well, okay. There's no need to evaluate that. Um. Alright, so here. Best move, pawn c3, knight c2 check. Why is that best? Um... Well, let's ask the engine, you know, instead of, I forget, this is number of threads, not number of variations. How do I get the engine to provide more than one variation? Um, let's see here, threads, contempt, multi-PV. That's the one. Engine, give me information about the best two moves in the position and how they evaluate. All right, so the top two at a depth of 13 are pawn c3 and queen d3. Wait, what? Why not 98? All right. Um, hmm. Give 
give me the top 20 six position and their evaluations. Um, all right, depth of 13. Our top move is pawn c3, queen, uh, bishop d3, queen d3, king e2, pawn f3. All right, so in all of these, right, d6, so the knight's moving various places. Where's d6, e8 in any of this? It's just not there. So the knight e8 move is not prioritized. Um, interesting. And if I go update my test, white to move, and we say moves d6 e8. d6 e8 is this knight move. Uh, we were on the test. Top two moves in this position. Um, knight d3 and pawn g6. So pawn g6 is found. That's just not, according to the engine, not the best move. Um, which is wrong. So, yeah, um, mm -hmm. so I get to go back in my issue tracker. Am I logged in? I don't think I'm logged in here. So I'm just going to record my findings here instead in the LeechS forum. Um, so my findings are even after fixing the move generator. Uh, or rather, after fixing the move generator, I see... Um, the original bug step VN. And then we're going to do say cat bend for build. This is the command we run. Don't need this last parameter on there. And we tell them what we found. Um, okay. Whoops, this is the checkmate. Um, uh, investigate how the Capture history might be involved, although that is strange because for all other variants, um, suspect something else may also be affecting this. I don't know. So we can reproduce the issues. Really would have helped if somebody could have given me, like, here's the exact steps to reproduce the bug. Um, 
occasionally, like if I really fuck up, uh, then we actually do get such help. But if I'm doing pretty well overall, people still get mad, but um, constructive feedback is hard to come by unless I seriously screw something up like this, where Stockfish just can't find the move at all. Like, yeah, no, that's terrible. That's definitely a bug. It's this sort of thing that reminds people, like, what a bug is actually like. But, yeah. Stockfish does not recognize knight takes g7. No, you're right. Um, after black plays g6 or g5, white plays bishop g6 and takes the knight on b4. And, um... Okay, so yeah, this is the strongest move because of bishop d6 and bishop takes knight. Which I have played before and fallen for or whatever. Um, so, which that completely removes the mate threat on white and also wins a queen. So this is actually a pretty popular line in this variation. Or at least it's an important trap to know about. And it's reproducible in a lot of positions with this sort of pawn structure with this knight over here. Um, no, it's not. No, but I've just seen this position and fallen for this before. I think even against Stockfish, I've fallen against fallen to this. While trying to analyze stuff. Let's see, this is theoretically important. But also, like, the sort of strange, like, I'm going to threaten mate and then have a check to follow up, and then because it's check, you can't check me. That's pretty powerful. Um, not sure what the capture history would have to do with any of this, but I guess we'll figure it out eventually. Anywho, it's early or late, depending on your perspective. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.